long time ago, there lived a shopkeeper, a king, and a poor man. One day, the shopkeeper went out into the forest, but got terribly lost. He got so lost, he wandered for nearly three whole days. Oh, heaven save me! he cried. I'll gladly give away my favourite daughter in marriage and three sacks of gold to anyone who can lead me out of this forest. I can help you, said a quiet voice. The shopkeeper looked about and saw no one but a little hedgehog beneath his feet. I can show you the way out of the forest, said the hedgehog. The shopkeeper thought that perhaps the hedgehog wasn't quite suited to marry his daughter, but he was so worried about being lost that he said to the hedgehog, You shall choose the fairest of my three daughters and have three sacks of gold if you can help me. And so the hedgehog showed him the way, and after a while they arrived out of the forest. And with a sigh, the shopkeeper thanked the hedgehog and shook his paw, saying, A promise is a promise and then continued on his way home. Not long after, the king also got lost in the same forest. What I wouldn't give for anyone or anything who could help me home, he cried. I'd gladly give away my favourite daughter in marriage, as well as three cartloads of gold to anyone who could help me. I can help you, said a quiet voice. The king looked about, and nearly tripped over the little hedgehog beneath his feet. I can show you the way out of the forest, said the hedgehog. The king thought that hedgehogs didn't make the best looking of princes. But he was so worried and anxious to get out of the forest that he told the hedgehog, You shall choose the fairest of my daughters and have three cartloads of gold if you can help me. And so the hedgehog showed him the way, and after a while they arrived at the edge of the forest. The king was mightily relieved and said, A promise is a promise. You shall choose the fairest of my daughters and receive three cartloads of gold for helping me. It so happened that not long after, the poor man also got lost in the forest. Oh, heaven save me, he cried. How will I ever get home? I have nothing to give. But if anyone helps me out of this forest, I could offer them a place in my family and help them if they ever ran into difficulty. I can help you, said the little hedgehog. I can show you the way out of the forest. Thank you, said the poor man. I shall always be in your debt, and if ever you need some help, I will always welcome you into my home and family. And so the hedgehog led the poor man out of the forest, and after a while they reached the way out. Thank you again, said the poor man. I will not forget your kindness, and he continued his way home. Time passed, and gradually the shopkeeper, the king and the poor man forgot all about their meetings with the little hedgehog in the forest. The shopkeeper grew fat and rich, the king grew even richer and even fatter, and the poor man lived his quiet life with his wife in their little cottage. But one freezing winter's night, when snow covered the ground, and the wind howled. The poor man and his wife were tucked up in bed, fast asleep. The man was awakened by the sound of a strange knocking. What is that sound? He said to his wife. What sound? Said his wife sleepily. There, that knocking sound, he replied. There. The wind kept howling and the knocking continued. The man and his wife hid under the bedclothes. 
Perhaps he's a g ghost. Or maybe a hungry wolf. Or, or, or the bogey man. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew the front door wide open. Who was there? stammered the man. It's me, said a little voice. Your friend, the hedgehog. My home has been lost in the storm. And I came to you for help. I've been knocking on your door for ages. Well, bless my soul, said the man. Come on in and make yourself at home. You must be cold and exhausted. Let us light the fire and make up a bed for you. And so the poor man and his wife made the hedgehog welcome and treated him like their own son. The hedgehog liked living with his new mum and dad and enjoyed playing with the ducks and the chickens in the field next to the cottage. How he enjoyed having new friends and a kind mum and dad to look after him. His favourite game was playing hide and seek with the chickens. Because their clucking always gave him away. And as time went by, the hedgehog grew up. Well, one day, he asked his father if he would go to the market in the town and, if he had enough money, buy him a cockerel and a worn-out saddle. His father agreed and set off to the market to buy the things his son wanted. And it wasn't long before he returned with a proud black rooster and an old saddle. The hedgehog placed the saddle on the rooster, jumped up and rode off saying, Farewell, father. I have an important errand to see to. And off he went along the road to town. He made a splendid sight, riding his rooster along the road. He didn't stop until he arrived at the house of the shopkeeper he had met in the forest. He walked up to the house and knocked on the door. The shopkeeper opened it and nearly fell over backwards when he saw the hedgehog. I suppose you've come for your three sacks of gold, he said. Yes, said the hedgehog, and to choose one of your daughters as my bride. The shopkeeper groaned and explained to his daughters about the promise he had made. They each burst into floods of tears about the thought of marrying a hedgehog. <laughs> they all cried. But the hedgehog took no notice and chose the youngest and prettiest of the daughters. She stepped into a glass carriage and sat next to the three sacks of gold while the hedgehog rode next to her on his rooster. <laughs> she cried and cried and cried until the carriage was awash with tears. I don't think I want you for my wife, said the hedgehog, and took her back to the shopkeeper's house. He kept the gold, though, and rode back to his own family. Time passed until one day the hedgehog once more jumped on his rooster, this time to visit the king at his palace. He was granted a royal audience. And the king nearly fell off his throne when he saw the hedgehog. Do you remember me? said the hedgehog. I'm rather afraid that I do, replied the king. And he summoned his daughters to tell them about his encounter in the forest and what he had promised. Now listen here, my daughters. One of you is to be married to this hedgehog. Which of you will be his willing bride? The eldest daughter made a face like a prune and said, Certainly not I. I don't like ugly things. And she strode out of the room. No, I neither, said the middle daughter and strutted haughtily away. The youngest daughter smiled and said, I will happily marry the hedgehog 
He has shown great kindness to my father, and I know I have nothing to fear. And so the king was both happy and sad at the same time. Happy because he could see how kind and wonderful his daughter was, but sad that she was marrying a hedgehog. He didn't really think that hedgehogs were very handsome. But the princess willingly stepped into a golden carriage while the hedgehog rode beside her on his rooster. Behind them followed the three cartloads of gold driven by the royal footman and guarded by the king's soldiers. The princess looked happy as she sat in the carriage and the hedgehog looked in and asked are you sure you want to marry me? Yes, replied the girl. I know you are right for me. You saved my father and you have shown you have a beautiful spirit. You don't find me ugly, do you? No, she replied. Not at all. And at that moment... The hedgehog leapt from his rooster and miraculously transformed into a handsome prince. His rooster reared up and turned into a magnificent black stallion. And on that very spot, a majestic castle towered up in front of them. Its walls of glorious white marble gleaming in the sunlight. People rushed from all over the land to see the wonderful sight. The lofty towers were so high they could be seen for miles and miles across the country. Even the shopkeeper and his three daughters ran to witness this most incredible scene. The poor man and his wife couldn't believe their luck. They were to become members of the royal family. And although the prince now stood over six feet high, his mother said, I should always think of him as my dear little hedgehog. Everyone rejoiced as it was announced there was to be a banquet that would last three days. During the feast, hundreds of musicians played, including the best violinist and clarinetist in the land. Acrobats leapt and twisted, clowns tumbled and jugglers threw their clubs high in the air. Everyone laughed and was happy. The prince and princess danced with all the guests and the prince even got his friends, the chickens, to join in. The party continued for three whole days and three whole nights. No one slept because they had so much fun. It was rounded off with a glittering marriage ceremony held in the great hall of the castle. Everyone cried with happiness and the prince and princess lived happily ever after. And do you know Ever got lost in the forest again.